Hello, dear students. Welcome back to a new lecture, and I hope you're doing well. So in this lecture, we're going to take a grammar lesson, and uh, this week also we'll be focusing on writing and uh, taking some writing skills. So our reading lesson is related to the present tense, which is the present perfect progressive tense. Here's the table of contents. We will explain the present perfect progressive tense, the types of sentences, transitional signals, and the affixes, suffixes, and prefixes. So here is a small introduction. Uh, try to guess the uh, tense or more details about the tense, which I already introduced to you, which, which is the present perfect progressive tense or continuous tense. So I'm a tense which you can use to emphasize on the duration of actions, express anger or irritation and for time bound expressions. For example, when you say, I've been living in this house for 40 years, or he has been singing for two years, or they have been watching the movies since 10 p.m. So these are all examples on the usage of the present perfect continuous tense. So try to either remember this tense or guess more details, usage and form of this tense. Okay, and in the next slide, I'll be explaining more details. So we're going to start with the grammar rules. First, the usage. When do I use the present perfect progressive tense? I just want to remind you that before we studied the present perfect tense, for example, uh, I have been there before and the progressive tense like uh, I'm working on my project, all right? And now this is a tense that combines both the perfect and the progressive. So the first usage is to emphasize on duration of the action. For example, I've been learning French since I went to school. So since that period of time, that's the duration of the action that I have been doing, which is learning French. So I have been learning French since I went to school. The second usage is to express anger or irritation. For example, if you are irritated from someone who's being lazy, for example, or wasting time, you could tell them, why have you been disturbing me or why have you been wasting your time? So the person have been doing something since a period of time and still doing it. And the third usage is time-bound expressions, which were introduced before, like since and for and lately and how long. For example, he has been watching TV for two hours or he has been smoking since 2015. And now we move to the form. Well, we have already uh, looked now at examples. I have been studying for one hour. So let's try to conclude the form. We have I, which is the subject, the person who's doing the action here in this case, I, and then we have have, because we already know that I takes have, he or she or it takes has, you takes have. So what comes after I is the auxiliary verb have. So I have been, so here we have also verb be, it's also an auxiliary verb, but in the past participle. Remember, be, been in the past participle. So I have been, plus the main verb, it was study, and I add to it ing, and it becomes studying. I have been studying. He has been playing. Uh, she has been uh, acting. All right, so I plus have or has plus been plus the main verb plus ing, and then for one hour, for example. All right, so here you can give your own example. Again, I, the subject, have the auxiliary verb, which is in the present tense, been, auxiliary verb in the past participle, and traveling, for example, travel, the base form of the verb, plus ing. And lastly, in this short lesson, we 
get introduced to changing the sentence from the affirmative to the negative and then to the inter interrogative. So in the affirmative, the sentence would be, for example, he has been playing football for two hours. He, subject, has been playing football for two hours. Okay, this is the affirmative sentence. Now in the negative, I say he has not been playing football for two hours. So I place the not between has and been. And in the interrogative, in interrogative in which I ask a question, I put has at the beginning or have, depending on what I have in my sentence. So I say, has he been playing football for two hours? Ha uh, have I been uh, studying for one hour? All right, again, he has been playing football for two hours. Subject has or have plus been plus verb plus ing. He has not been playing football for two hours. Subject has have not and then been plus verb plus ing. Has he been playing football for two hours? Has or have plus the subject plus been plus verb plus ing. And by now, we finish explaining this short lesson, which is the present perfect progressive tense. And here you have practice questions. So try practicing them on your own. So here you have to put the, uh, or use the present perfect continuous tense and fill in the blanks. For example, I'm tired because I've been working very hard, All right? So if you're an online student, I recommend you uh, stop this video and try solving them on your own. So the second one would be, he has been writing letters all morning. Catherine or Katharina is getting fatter because she has been eating too much. My mother uh, has been also peeling the potatoes all afternoon. Casey has been attending a cookery course since March. How long have you been learning English, etc.? Okay, and here part B, you have to choose the present perfect tense or present perfect continuous. So for example, do I say I have bought a new pair of shoes or I have been buying a new, a new pair of shoes? Now, obviously we have to say I have bought a new pair of shoes. So we choose the present perfect tense. The second one, have you finished or have you been finishing reading? Have you finished reading that book yet? Okay, and it continues on and on. Then part C, there is one grammatical mistake in each sentence. You need to circle it and correct it. I've been climbed this mountain for over than uh, two hours. So I've been climbing. Okay, and then you continue the rest. And here you have to create or write your own sentences, three sentences using the present perfect progressive tense correctly. And now we move to the types of sentences. Now, the types of sentences, um, you're supposed to know them from before, but we are revising them. So I will be uploading a worksheet. I, you have here the link, okay? So I'll be showing you the worksheet now on the types of sentences. So in general, we have four main types of sentences, the simple sentence, the compound sentence, the complex sentence, and the compound complex sentence. A simple sentence is a sentence that contains a subject and a verb, or we can say subject and a predicate. Now, of course, the verb is not the predicate, but subject, verb, and it should express a single complete thought in which when I read this simple sentence, I can understand it on its own. It doesn't mean, it doesn't need any other sentences to make it clear. For example, the baby cried for, for food. There is a subject, the baby, and a verb. And this sentence expresses a complete thought. I can understand it. This is a simple sentence. Now, a, compa a compound sentence is mainly the combination, compound, I'm combining two simple sentences together, all right? And again, I will say it again. Each simple sentence already has its own 
subject, verb, and complete thought. But they should be re related for sure. I do not combine two sentences together to make one new sentence if the ideas are not related. However, how do I combine them? I need to use a conjunction, which is called the coordinating conjunction, like for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. And I can save them, them shortly as fanboys. Okay. Okay. So um, now I want to tell you one thing that's important. When I'm joining these two simple sentences together to make one compound sentence, I can no more call them sentences. I call them clauses. They are a group of words. So I call them clauses. However, a simple sentence has a complete thought already, and I can understand it. So it does not depend on the other sentence. That's why it's called an independent clause. So a compound sentence has two independent clauses, and an independent clause is a part of a sentence that can stand alone because it contains a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought. So basically, it contains two simple sentences. Next, we move to the complex sentence. Uh, opposite to the compound sentence, the complex sentence does not have two independent clauses. It has one independent and one that's dependent. So one that can stand alone as a simple sentence and one that cannot be a simple sentence. And I join them using a subordinating conjunction or a relative pronoun or a relative adverb. And here you have examples. For example, after eating lunch at the uh, cheesecake factory, Tim went to the gym to exercise. Okay, so let's look at each clause independently now. If I look at Tim went to the gym to exercise, I have Tim, the subject, went, the verb, a complete thought. So this is the independent clause, which was once a simple sentence. But if I say, after eating lunch at the cheesecake factory, if I tell you only this part, after eating lunch at the cheesecake factory, you tell me, okay, so what? So you wouldn't understand. So that's called the dependent clause, which depend on this part to be understood. Okay, and we have after here. So that's an example of a complex sentence. Now, the compound complex sentence is a sentence that has two independent clauses and at least one dependent clause, okay? So again, simple sentence has a subject, a verb, and a complete thought. Compound sentence has two independent clauses combined together using a coordinating conjunction, which for sure should be preceded by a comma. I just want to give you a simple example here. They spoke to him in Spanish, Comma, but he responded in English. He responded in English. He, subject, responded, verb, and a complete thought. Simple sentence, so independent clause. They spoke to him in Spanish, also independent clause. Now here, the ideas are opposite, so I chose but. The here, for example, the shoplifter had stolen clothes, so he ran once he stole the police. So here, we have cause-effect relationship, which shows so. So for sure, we do not choose any coordinating conjunction, which is the one that fits our sentence and the idea. Then the complex sentence, it has an independent clause um, joined by one or more dependent clauses. So at least one independent clause, and there can be one or more dependent clauses. However, compound complex, does not have only one independent, it has at least two independent clauses and at least one dependent clause. Okay, so that's it for the types of sentences. Please focus on them. And if you have any question, you can let me know because this is a part of your writing. And when you're writing your essays, you have to have correct sentences and you have to vary in your sentences. Okay, now we move on to the affixes, suffixes, and prefixes. Um, here we go. So um, these are roots which we add to the um, word to change its meaning. 
For example, when I say uh, hat, hats, I'm adding S to the word hat. So I'm changing it from the singular to the plural. Or for example, when I say write and rewrite, I'm adding re to write. So I'm changing its meaning. And the, uh, you already know that uh, prefixes are added before with, or before the word, which means at the beginning, and suffixes are added at the end, like big, bigger, or right, writer, okay? So they are added to the original word to change its meaning. That's mainly it. Now here, this uh, worksheet, it has the lists for each grade level. So you go to your grade level, like grade seven or grade eight, like here. And for sure, if you're in grade eight, you need to review the affixes and roots from the prior grade. If you're in grade seven, you need also to review those of the previous grades. And you have it all already, so you will be saving it all and you can look at them all. Uh, and here they go. And then we go to the transitional signals. Okay, let me show you now the worksheet, which I will be also uploading. Transitional signals, you have, uh, you already know them. You have, uh, uh, we, sorry, uh, you are introduced to them before. So transitional signals are the linking words or the phrases that connect your ideas and add the cohesion to, the, to your writing. Um, when I say in conclusion, because, uh, in addition, moreover, uh, all these words are called the signal transition words, which signal, for example, the shift in my uh, essay. When I say second, first, it signals uh, the order, the sequence of events, etc. So they signal the transition that I'm transiting that or I'm moving from one paragraph to another, from one idea to another. Okay, so they link between words and the phrases and they connect your ideas, they show the relationship. So they indicate to the reader the relationship between the sentences and paragraphs and they make it easier for the reader to understand your ideas and also to make sense of your essay. Okay, now how are they useful? As we, read, as we said, they make it easier for the reader the ideas will flow easily, the connection will be clear, they create powerful links between the sentences and the paragraphs, and they help to carry over a thought from one sentence to another, okay? So the reader wouldn't be reading one sentence and the other sentence separately without having cohesion and one uh, thought, okay? Now, how are they used? They are usually placed at the start of the sentence, However, however, they may also appear in the middle or the end, but most of the times at the beginning. Um, the transition signal or the close introduced by a transition signal is usually separated from the rest of the sentence by commas, okay? For example, when I say in conclusion, I put a comma and I complete my sentence. And you do not need to use transition signals in every sentence in a paragraph. Now you use them when you need them, when you need to show the relationship. Which transition signals can I use? And that's why we are giving uh, or learning this, uh, these uh, signals. So here you have uh, the signals which you can use when you want to introduce an example. You can say the most commonly used uh, signal is for example, but you can say for instance, to illustrate, to demonstrate, on this occasion, in this case, one example of this is, or specifically. So instead of all the time saying, for example, for example, for example, repeatedly, uh, you can try to learn and do use in your writing several transition signals when you want to introduce an example. Okay, and that's what I want you to do. In our next writing, you are going to Put this worksheet in front of you and choose the um, the uh, signal which you need, okay, and not the one which you always write or use. Uh, for example, to introduce an opposite idea, 
or to show exception. You can say alternatively, you are, you are alternating something opposite or in contrast, despite, whereas, however, uh, even though in spite of still nevertheless yet, one could also say while instead, but, and on the other hand, okay? Uh, when you want to show agreement, you can say accordingly or in accordance, okay? Uh, to introduce an additional idea, you can say additionally or in addition, as well as besides also and so. Instead of using also and and all the time, you can use furthermore besides uh, equally important further, one could also say, or again, okay? So there's quite a um, rich list here, which you can use also to indicate the sequence or the order or the logically vivid, uh, or sorry, to logically divide an idea. You can say after, eventually, finally, first, previously, subsequently, concurrently, simultaneously, okay? And to indicate time, you say at this point, before, finally, uh, previously, immediately, during. So can you see how these transitions, they signal the shift, whether in time or this order or the idea or the relationship? To compare, you can say, you, you know already, comparison means to show similarity. So you can say just like, or you can say similarly, likewise. Another way to view this contrast is to show differences. So you can say nevertheless or unlike, uh, notwithstanding, however, on the other hand, conversely, to show cause and effect, you can say so as a result for this reason, thus therefore as a consequence or consequently or hence, and to summarize and conclude your essay, you can say in conclusion, in other words, uh, summing up ultimately, consequently, therefore, as shown in summary or in brief. Okay, so that's mainly it for this lecture. Uh, you are going to use the um, sentences, some, all the types of sentences the affixes and the prefixes, you, you need to study them. And you need also to use the transitional signals in your next writing. Now, what comes after this picture are uh, not something new. They are only uh, notes for you to revise, so you can look at them. A revision of the parts of a sentence, like an article, an adjective, a noun, verb, a position, pronoun, and a conjunction. Uh, here you have the punctuation rules. For example, every sentence should end with a full stop. Proper nouns should be capitalized. When you use opening quotation marks, you should close them. When you use, uh, you cannot, for example, use an apostrophe when you want to pluralize a word. Sometimes people um, want to write a word in the plural form, but they add an apostrophe. So you need to be able to differentiate between um, the possessive nouns, for example, or when you need to put an apostrophe or when you are just making it in the plural form. You do not link independent clauses with commas because you will have a run-on sentence. And that's why we already introduced also the types of sentences. When do I put the commas and the points? Independent clauses, which are simple sentences mainly, I, if I only connect them with commas, I will have a run-on sentence. So independent clauses make a, a coordinating, uh, I'm sorry, make a compound sentence. So we need to use a coordinating conjunction preceded with a comma. Uh, for example, quotation marks um, are when uh, quoting or sometimes to convey irony, not for emphasis. So if you want to emphasize an idea, do not use quotation marks, etc. Also, the capitalization uh, rules, for example, you capitalize the days, the months, and the holidays, but not the seasons. You capitalize the most words in the titles. You capitalize, capitalize the cities, the countries, so mainly the proper nouns. You do not capitalize after a colon. Uh, you capitalize the first word of a quote. 
uh, sometimes and capitalize the first word of a sentence for sure. Uh, here, editing and revising, when you write an essay, as we said before, it's always important to follow this um, process of pre-writing, writing, and post-writing. So you pre before writing your essay, you brainstorm your ideas on a draft paper. For sure, you put the checklist in front of you and you, you write an outline. And then after uh, preparing all your, all, all your ideas, you write them in an essay by following all the steps of writing an essay. And for sure, by focusing on using the correct transition words, sentence structure, uh, punctuation, uh, spacing, etc. Now, after writing or post writing, you need to edit, which means you proofread your essay, but you do not just skim and scan. You need to read each sentence word by word and check for the meaning if it's correct, the sentence structure if it's correct, uh, for capitalization, um, for the punctuation, for your spelling mistakes. So you put the checklist in front of you and you uh, look for the mistakes in detail. You focus um, at, like uh, once at a time on what you want to correct and you do correct your writing. And then revising after editing, you read it all at once, the whole essay, and uh, listen to yourself if your essay sounds correct, if it's coherent, the ideas, and everything is good to go. Okay. Uh, as we said, you find your focus, you focus on also the, the flow of the content, and if you decide whether you want to add something or to make it shrink or to uh, remove some sentences or extra ideas. All right, so I hope everything was clear. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any question, you have my email. You can ask me your questions and please, um, if you would like, you can follow me at Learn with Maha on social media and have a nice day.